Great Debate, where today we're talking about how real life crosses over with anime. Anime is often a very escapist medium. It's often about giant robots and science fiction and uh, um, people being transported to fantasy worlds and all that kind of stuff, right? Um, and so sometimes, though, anime feels very much like the real world. And it's not just when it's set in you know, modern day, present day, present time. <laughs> it is when anime feels real. It feels grounded very strongly. And so I wanted to bring up some, some examples of that. Um, in the chat room, I forget who it was who brought up um, uh, a recent anime series called After the Rain, where um, it just it, it, it felt to that person like, because uh, I haven't seen these particular scenes, like the, um, the sequences were really pulled from real life, that the, the author had really gone through these experiences. It's a, it's a romance series. Um, so there's that. There, there are these things that, that really feel like they are real experiences. Um, an example I would say is Summer Wars. I don't know if Summer Wars is, how much of Summer Wars is based on the author's real experiences. Obviously, they didn't, you know, the, the exact things in Summer Wars didn't happen. But the, the actual sense of being around your family and all the chaos of a family reunion um, feels very real. It, it feels like it's pulled from things. And the director has said that that was, uh, he was kind of inspired by some of his own family get-togethers. Um, and the rest of his works, you know, Wolf Children, he said, was very much inspired by the experience of having young, ch young children running around in, in the house and what that was like, especially for him and his, his, uh, his, his wife and what it was like taking care of young children, right? Um, uh, and then you have, uh, yeah, welcome, welcome to the NHK. It's a great example of a series that is about somebody who is trying to escape into a fantasy world but keeps getting pulled back into reality. Um, and NHK is, is complicated because the character doesn't, you know, the character in a sense wants to escape from real life, but he finds those fantasies too weird. And so in a sense, he's trying to hold on to real life and not escape into those, those particular fantasies. So it's, it's, it's an interesting commentary. And then again, Evangelion, um, all about not running away. Now, again, Evangelion is set in this very, um, um, non-realistic setting, this very futuristic, this, this very sci-fi setting is, it would be a good term. Right? It's not just, you know, a different time. There are giant robots and, and lots of weirdness in that universe. Um, uh, but the main character is trying to very much face reality and face the situation he's in and not run away. Um, so there's that. Then, of course, there's also, for example, um, there is anime that's literally based on actual historical events. So Grave of the Fireflies and Barefoot Again, where, uh, you know, those are not exactly what happened, but there's that. And then, yeah, Liquidus, you're absolutely right. Uh, Shirobako is, you know, it's not literally what happened to these characters, but it's based on the experiences of people working in the anime industry and the, the kinds of experiences you have. So it is... Uh, again, kind of very grounded in reality while the characters are not, you know, based on this person, based on that person necessarily. Although in Shirobako, you know, actual voice actors show up in the series as characters in the anime series. Like, it is their name and their voice actor playing that character. So there's that. Um... <clears throat> in this corner of the world. Cool, yep, definitely. Uh, the Wind Rises is a little complicated as an example because uh, The Wind Rises basically merges both um, the main character's real life and a fictional short story. So a lot of that film did not happen at all, uh, much less the, the, the dreams he has. Um, but a lot of the, the story, like the whole thing with his wife is completely made up. Um, it's based on the short story. So The Wind Rises is an interesting thing where you kind of, uh, in order to tell this, this character's story, um, Miyazaki felt a need to weave fiction into nonfiction. 
Uh, and Matt, you're absolutely right in the chat room that um, anime is very trope focused, and it, ha it has been trope focused for a very long time. Let's let's be honest. You know, um, anime of the '70s was very tropey, just, just different tropes. Um, um, but it's certainly a, a, a it's there, there's a bit more of that now than there was back in the in the '80s, for example, where you could, you could do more original stuff. Um, so yeah, the, the, there's not as much of a desire to focus on on real life. The other interesting thing is the whole big boom in uh, like the realistic sort of moe harem series of the 2000s where you had, you know, guys trying to buy half a dozen cute girls in high school. And it was very much modern day, but it was very escapist because the characters all fell into these very simple, uh, you know, personality buckets. The tsundere, the quiet girl with glasses, all that. And so it didn't feel, a lot of those shows don't really feel real. They don't feel real world grounded. It's just using the modern world as your escapist fantasy environment, if you will. And, you know, really a lot of them were, were, were um, escaping back to the, to the high school days where all you had to do was go to classes and do your homework. We didn't have all the stresses of adult life and you'd be surrounded by cute teenage girls. So why not, right? Um, so what I think is really interesting about how anime takes that is the diff multiple different directions it goes in where you, know, you have the, the shows that are, um, you know, that take the modern society, to take modern uh, environments and basically make a fantasy out of it, or they cannot. Uh, a good example of that, I need to, one second. Um, so uh, A Place Further Than the Universe, I think, is a great example from last season of a show that is about real life and is much more, about the real world and trying to be, trying to figure out who you are in a way that isn't as um, um, fantastical, isn't as, um, it isn't trying to reassure the viewer that, oh, it'll all be okay. Now it's a very positive series, but the idea is this is a struggle, this is hard, that changing your life, being a better person is something that takes real struggle um, something you don't see in a lot of, of anime series, right? Momoro Hosoda, yeah, totally. Yeah, he, he definitely has a summertime Japan thing. Um, I mean, that, that is that is kind of a fetish in anime in general. You know, the cicadas in summer, all that is is definitely a trope, but you're absolutely right that Hosoda does it much more than most. Um, he He... Yeah, I mean, Summer in Japan is definitely a, a thing he harps on. And the other interesting thing, actually, about this is how anime will often layer in a serious subject into a show that's not serious, that is kind of escapist, where um, uh, Taisho Yaku Musume, Taisho, Taisho Baseball Girls, is a comedy set in 1920s Japan, but deals with arranged marriages. Um, as a very minor subplot. And it's dealt with very seriously. Like, it's not funny. There's this 13-year-old girl who has this arranged marriage to this guy. She's not married yet. Um, and it's kind of like, this is a thing, right? This is a, a thing that exists, and she's probably going to get married to this guy, and what do you do? Um, and that's kind of interesting to me. So, yeah, I mean, you're absolutely right, Spin to Win, that um, Hasoda's films, like Girl Who Left Through Time, Summer Wars... Uh, even our war war game uh, are are very much about that 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 idea of summer in Japan of of getting across that feeling of what it's like during summertime in high school. Um, obviously, I can't talk about what it's like being a high school high schooler in Japan, but um, there's that, yeah, I, I use that term grounded. It's, it's very grounded in what that's like. Even Wolf Children, you know, the some of the core moments in that happen during the summer. And I think it, it, is, it is really interesting that Hosoda uses some, the summertime in Japan to pull the viewer in and remember, remind them what it was like being a teenager. Right? And like you say, Fisher, that also tends to create a, a bit of a branding around Hosoda, 
where when you see a summertime scene with a soda, you think, ah, I know where I am. I know what that feels like. My mom talks about this with church, where when she goes into an Episcopal church and they start going through the liturgy, she is suddenly, boom, focused. She is there. Uh, and she is, you know, th that puts her in church mindset in a way that other, you know, approaches to church, especially more free-form church services, um, which, are, which are sometimes more, more entertainment-like, do not. And that's where, like, yeah, I think uh, that idea that Soda has kind of branded summer, if you will, into that. Um, so Derp asked an interesting question in the chat room. Would you say anime being an animated medium helps serve escapism or is a detriment to it? I think, I think it more helps escapism than not because the characters, you know, aren't real. You know, there is a level of, of separation between us and them. Um, but it can definitely go both ways. One of the advantages of the animated medium is that it's, it is more easy to identify yourself with an animated character because it is abstract, right? I do not look like Tom Cruise. So I'm never going to identify with Tom Cruise as closely as I can with, you know, a character from Naruto or Attack on Titan or things like that because those character designs are just more abstract. Um, so that is, again, you're right, Anamiba. You're welcome to the NHK. Um, has escapism as a theme, but stays very much in the real world. And, and it's interesting because NHK values the real world. It, it is very much a series about how important it is to stay in the real world, despite the fact that the main character is, is kind of being pulled away by his, his neuroses, if you will, his, his mental problems. Um, and so you get to see kind of that, that balancing act between what's going on to that, all that. Um... Yeah, no, you absolutely get anime that um, that are absolutely ahead of their time. You know, uh, you talk about virtual idols. Um, you know, I think on Mega Zone Twenty Three may have uh, suggested it. I think Macross Plus, with you know giant holographic virtual idols, is a direct precursor to the the amazing hologram concerts that Hatsune Miku do, do, does in Japan and all that stuff. Um, you know, and you have these anime that absolutely bring this bring this up. Ghost in the Shell, information warfare, absolutely. Um, you know, we are increasingly living in the Ghost in the Shell world in this fascinating way. And Ghost in the Shell done a great great uh, job of updating itself for the times, where the Ghost in the Shell TV series was not the exact same tech and universe as the movie, which is not the same exact same as the manga. Right? That they knew how to evolve things. Yeah, you're absolutely right, Spin. You, uh, NHK understands depression. Understands what, one of the great things about NHK is within a few episodes, you absolutely empathize with, with a character who wants to escape from reality and who is in this very weird place. Um, and how, you know, very few of us will ever be in that position of being a complete shut-in. You know, and, and and by I don't, I don't I don't just mean you know rarely going outside. I mean somebody who is physically afraid of going outside. Um, I, very few of us will actually be in that position, but you absolutely get it very quickly. Um, not the least because of that song that plays constantly in the background, which is so hilarious. Um, for those not familiar, welcome to the NHK. The main character has become sort of socially isolated, and so he stays in his apartment all the time. And his next door neighbor is playing this anime song, this one anime song on repeat, 24 hours a day. So, like for the entire episode, no matter where you are, and sometimes it's a, you, you can't you can't entirely hear it. It's a, you know like two rooms away, sometimes a little closer, but it's always somewhere there in the background. It just drives you mad. Um, it's it's brilliant little little storytelling, um, uh, and it's the most insipid, you know. Uh, standard like somebody just cranked this out anime song um so it, it, it's very funny but it is one of those things that does drive you into that character's into that character's mind and that's a great point actually is that one of the interesting things about anime is how well it, it helps you empathize with those characters um one of the ways that i think live action in the west and other other mediums don't do a really good job with that um you know i don't feel like I'm Captain Kirk. I don't feel like I'm Picard. I don't feel like I'm 
you know, name a character from Leverage or whatever. I don't identify necessarily with those characters and how they see things. Um, instead, I'm expected to see what they do and maybe agree or disagree. Um, whereas in anime, they do a really good job of, of understanding a character's emotional state and why they are who they are. And it's one of the reasons why I think anime can feel so real. Because we're not just seeing other characters and their opinions, we understand what it's like to be, you know, to be those people. Um, <clears throat> oh, you're absolutely right, Derp. You know, you know, some people identify more with live action. Um, it certainly depends on the person. It's just, you know, that abstract has been shown to have an effect on, on some people. Right? So that is, that is a, a thing. Um, and that gets to this whole idea of adapting actual real live action stuff to anime. Stuff like uh, uh, you know, Barefoot Gen, uh, which is semi-autobiographical, same in Grave of the Fireflies. I think one of the reasons it works so well in the animation medium is because it is abstract. Because we can keep a bit of a distance from it. Um, while also in, 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 its, in our own ways, we can identify more closely with the characters sometimes. You know, when you're watching an, an actual real live action person going through, especially have kids, you know, imagine watching Grave of the Fireflies live action, right? Actually seeing children go through that would be kind of hard to watch. I remember watching um, War of the Worlds, the, the, the recent Steven, the more recent Steven Spielberg adaptation, not recent anymore. Um, and seeing, it's Dakota Fanning, I think is a little girl in there. I felt uncomfortable at times at how horribly horrified and traumatized that character looked and seemed to feel during that movie. I didn't really want to put myself in her shoes, but it's easier for me when watching animation to imagine that character's actual emotional state, to feel like it's emotional state. Um, you know, because of how good our brains are at recognizing faces, when we see a real face, um, we, can, we can, in a sense, um, because we, it's that, that weird irony, because we recognize the face so closely when it's a real little girl, a real child, we tend to bounce back from it because we don't want to, you know, uh, identify that closely, It'll emotionally shatter us. But, but when we see an animated character, it's easier for us to pull forward, which can then cause a greater emotional attachment. You know, the mind is weird. That is, that is the thing. And underdog, the mystery anime. Um, mystery is a very strong part, a very um, common theme in anime, and I, I think you're, you're you're right that the mystery tends to uh, somehow feel more mysterious. It, it feels more immediate. It feels more um, like something that actually affects the characters. I think than it does over here. Partly because the mystery in, in anime is usually a background plot element you know it's something that is affecting the characters but it's not you know in mystery anime series the main characters are rarely full-time detectives right they're generally pulled into a mysterious environment and that can help us um, feel more realistic because when you're watching you know or you're reading Sherlock Holmes I don't feel like I'm Sherlock Holmes right um, I don't feel like I'm Hercule Poirot but I can identify with these you know, random people who are suddenly pulled into a mystery. I think that's a very smart way for anime to do that. So, okay. I think we've covered this topic pretty, pretty well. So thank you all very much for that. I think we'll, we'll stop that right there. And um, um, really appreciate your thoughts, especially those in the chat room. I hope you, can, you guys can join us every Friday night. Uh, for the live stream when we actually talk about this in the chat room and I will um, uh, we'll, we'll talk about more of this in later weeks so again thank you all very much and we'll see you next time